Proposition 6, Repeal the Gas Tax. For yes on Prop 6, please welcome Konstantinos Rodinas. And for the no on Prop 6 side, please welcome Michael Quigley. Konstantinos Rodinas is co-chair for yes on Prop 6. And Michael Quigley is executive director of the California Alliance for Jobs. Once again, welcome Patrick to introduce the moderators. All right, for our final panel on Proposition 6, our moderators are Jose Perez with the Latino Journal, Linda Louie from the Sacramento Chinese of Indochina Friendship Association, and Catherine Othman from Tofa, Sacramento. Thank you very much. Proposition 6 uh, is uh, very significant depending on uh, the side we are here today. And so we're delighted with the two experts that have been recruited to uh, share their views on this. Uh, and uh, but, uh, before we do, uh, I would like to just kind of lay out the uh, rules. Uh, we're going to allow each side to have two minutes to uh, present their ideas. And then after the opening comments, uh, our panel will be asking them one question, and you will have one minute to respond to the questions. So, um, why don't we go ahead and start with those who think Proposition 6 is a good idea. Thank you. My name is Constantinos Rodinas. You saw me earlier as the candidate for California State Controller, and I'm the co-chair of Yes on 6. And why Yes on 6? It's a very regressive tax that hurts families the most and working people. Do we need to fix our roads? The answer is 100% yes. We have some of the worst roads in the nation, so that's not in dispute. The question we always ask, especially when we have to dig in the pockets of working families and people who are struggling, are we using our money as efficiently and effectively as possible? And let's see how we've been using our money. Well, in a recent study, it shows that only 20%, folks, only 20% of the gas tax is actually going towards road repairs. And then usually you'll hear the other side, and they call that deferred maintenance that we've had for years, is because they've been stealing our money that should be going to our roads. And then when we look at how we are spending up their money, taxpayers' money, well, the Reason Foundation did a study and they showed that we pay up to 470% to maintain a mile of roads compared to other states. Our administrative costs, 360% more. All roads, about 250% more. So we're not using our money and then we're diverting it. But now we're supposed to be told that SB1 is going to actually fix our roads, and this time they pinky swear promise they're going to actually use the money. But here's another thing that we just learned. Besides the 15% increase they gave to Caltrans employees as a benefit for passing SB1, besides the fact that the Orange County Register just went ahead a couple of days ago and reported that $875.7 million is diverted from SB1 money to go to rail. Folks, if they're lying to you, they've lied to me from day one, and they're doing it. We have the money to fix our roads without a pay increase um, and without hurting working families. We just need leadership, and we need people in there that understand that we use every single dollar as efficiently, as effectively as possible, 100% of the time, before we ever come back and ask money from the voters. And that's why you should be a yes on six. Thank you. My name is Michael Quigley. I'm the Executive Director with the California Alliance for Jobs. Uh, the Alliance for Jobs is a labor management organization that advocates for responsible investments in our state's infrastructure. We are one of the key organizations that passed SB1, worked with the legislature in a two-thirds vote, and the governor to make this most comprehensive transportation package in our nation's, for any state in our nation's history. And the reason why California needed this is because California had not raised the gas tax in 24 years. Despite what you hear from many of the folks uh, who believe that Proposition 6 is a good idea, every one of those people is in some ways associated with some political aspiration. I can tell you that from the people who are proponents of fixing the roads, it's your local governments, it's your mayors, it's your county supervisors, it's people like me 
who are trying to make this state a better place. And so what you end up with is a situation where overwhelmingly the information that's being presented is based in politically misleading claims. Infrastructure didn't used to be a partisan issue. It didn't used to be a wedge issue. It was a good government issue. And some of us are working to bring that back. And I think what you're gonna see with Proposition 6 is what they're asking is to make the state go backwards to advance some narrow conservative political interests. And what we believe the voters are gonna do is recognize that Proposition 6 is a dangerous initiative that will eliminate the funding for 6,500 current local projects. These are projects that are either underway right now or in, have already been funded and approved and will be break, breaking ground very shortly. These are 6,500 local projects. The money is distributed via formula. that has been a long-standing formula in the state for several decades. And that means that there's no politics played with how the money is spent. There is accountability measures uh, based off of Prop 69, which the voters passed in June, that create a constitutional lockbox. These are all narratives that the proponents of Proposition 6 don't want you to know, but the fact is that your money is going to the roads and California will be a better place when you vote no on Prop 6. Okay, thank you. One of the things we get uh, with the Latino Journal out of uh, individuals who are driving in a lot of our urban centers, Los Angeles, uh, the Bay Area, and so forth, uh, the concern is so high over uh, congestion and the time it takes from getting to the, from point A to point B, uh, whether it's work or business. And so how much of, of, uh, of uh, this money is allocated for new infrastructure to minimize congestion? Sure, so what was happening uh, before SB1 was passed was that the, mo the money that the state has go into two main pots. One is for new capital programs called the STIP, the State Highway Transportation Improvement Program. And there's another program called SHOP, that's maintenance. And that is what does the road repairs, resurfacing for existing infrastructure. And so the backlog of our state's deferred maintenance was between our state and local system was over $130 billion. And the backlog of, of maintenance was so great that actually money that was supposed to go towards capacity that was already dedicated, that was the voters were paying, uh, was end up going 100% into maintenance needs only. So there was no money for new capacity. And in fact, uh, in 2017, uh, there, there were actually in 2016, uh, the CTC, the California Transportation Commission, deprogrammed uh, $750 million of new construction projects and, because they had to meet the maintenance needs. And so what's done, what will happen now because of SB1 and once Prop 6 is defeated is that on an ongoing basis, we will have money for capital and we will have money for maintenance. And we will uh, we'll chip away at that backlog. We'll be able to build new roads with the money we already have dedicated towards roads and new road construction. And we'll have money to maintain that. So the system was out of balance. SB1 brought it back in balance. And what Prop 6 will do will move us backwards, defund 6,500 local road projects that are currently underway, and ultimately provide a less safe and a, and a weaker economy uh, for Californians. Do you guys hear that? Deferred maintenance. What does that mean? We haven't been spending your money wisely, but this time we swear we're going to go ahead and do it. That's exactly what he said. Not my words, that's his words. Right? We spend billions of dollars to fix roads and then we suddenly don't. If you want money for local roads, and I totally agree, in my own county, in Orange County, we passed a measure that was reauthorized called Measure it's used towards local road repairs. We took it in our own hands to go ahead and fix our roads because the state government was using, not even using our money. So I would recommend, since you represent cities, to put initiatives on the ballot that represent your city and you guys can control the money and fix your own roads instead of waiting for uh, Sacramento politicians that will waste your money. And then also, you're talking about new capacity roads. SB1 does not allow for general purpose roads to be built. They allow certain things like carpool lanes, but here's the great thing, folks. If you think you're paying enough, not enough money, well, they believe SB1 money should be used to build toll roads that you can go ahead and get into your car and then drive on it and pay to go ahead and drive on roads you've already paid for. This is a shakedown. That's plain and simple. This is a shakedown. Now, we need to fix our roads. I completely and utterly agree with you. 
but we use our money as efficiently and as effectively as possible first, and then if we need to come back, we ask the voters. We have to prove it to them. But this one, they want to have continual increases each year now based on the consumer price index so they don't have to have this discussion with you guys and say, have we been representing you? Have we been using the money wisely? And if, since you represent cities and you need that, I would, we can work together and we can help put you a ballot initiative on your local government so they can go ahead and use the money that they need instead of waiting on Sacramento politicians to actually do what's right. scenario that you're hearing about in this fictitious future ballot initiative, 
that would cost millions of dollars of wasted taxpayer money immediately. So it's much better to move forward with a system that's already working, that your governments are already implementing, that the local level, the resources are flowing. These are 6,500 local projects, local communities, local roads. Stop the attack on bridge and road safety, vote no on Prop 6. Thank you. The Legislative Analyst Office did a report a couple years ago and says you have 3,500 extra employees that we don't need. 3,500 employees that we don't need that cost us half a billion dollars a year from our actually fixing our roads. So we have the money, sir. We have the money. We are just going ahead and constantly wasting it. We need to go ahead, and he says, this is a partisan issue. It's a partisan issue. You're making it a partisan issue, sir. I'm looking out for the working families, and it does affect us. Not people who are just on the roads. How do you expect groceries to go to stores? How does it affect us day to day? It's $779.28 for the average family of four. To you, sir, that might be brunch with your lobbyist friends in Sacramento, but that really means a lot to go with the working class family. We really can respect them. You know why? I tell you guys, vote yes on six. It's time we went ahead and tell the politicians to stop it. You've raised our, the budget 61% in eight years, and we have a $9 billion surplus, supposedly. Well, guess what? We can use that money. Stop stealing our money. Use it towards our own Thank you.